I E R E. The key questions that will be addressed are what is environmental and resource economics? The differences between traditional and ERE, differences between natural resource and environmental economics, how can ERE be used to incorporate the natural environment into economic decision making, the key concepts discussed are the environment as a source of raw materials, assimilative capacity and amenity value. These concepts should be added to your glossary along with any other phrases or words that you may deem necessary. In South Africa, there are a variety of environmental concerns relating to the availability of clean water, air pollution, land use and degradation, loss of biodiversity and alien invasion, etc. A large proportion of these issues occur due to a lack of understanding of the economic value and the overall ecological importance of these resources. The traditional economic assumption that the environment, i.e., the natural capital such as fauna and flora, minerals, soil and water, does not play a limiting factor on economic growth and productivity, has led to improper economic and development decisions, often resulting in the unsustainable use of resources and pollution. The field of environmental and resource economics endeavors to assist decision makers in the process of making appropriate trade-offs between the environment, the economy and to a lesser degree society. Let's consider definition of ERE. ERE assumes that there are interactions between the environment and the economy that are interdependent. ERE can thus be defined as the application of economic principles to the management of environmental resources. It sets out to understand how and why individuals make decisions that have consequences for the natural environment and implement economic solutions to environmental problems. Traditionally, the economy existed in isolation from the natural environment. Within the introduction of ERE, the economy is seen as existing within the environment and as reliance on the environment in a number of ways. Two distinct but related fields exist within ERE. These are natural resource economics, which deals with the role of the environment as the source of raw materials for the economy, and environmental economics which deals with the effects of the economy on the environment, that is, pollution. Before we see how the economy relates to the environment, let's consider the linkages within a traditional economy. As you know, an economy consists of producers or firms and consumers. Firms produce consumption goods, such as soft drinks and paper, and capital goods, such as canning machines and chainsaws. Consumption goods are consumed directly and provide utility to consumers, whereas capital goods are used to produce consumer goods and thus represent future consumption. As mentioned before, the environment was considered to be an infinite resource and was not seen as being a limiting factor on the growth of the economy. This figure represents the traditional linear economy which does not take the environment into account. The environment provides three basic types of goods and services to the traditional linear economy. These are natural resource inputs such as timber and agricultural produce, a waste zinc, and a source of amenity value. Each of these goods and services, as well as how they relate to the economy, are discussed in further detail below. The first linkage between the environment and the economy is the environment as a source of resource inputs or raw materials. Here, resources are used as an input into the production process to produce consumer goods and capital goods. Resources can be classified as exhaustible or non-renewable resources and renewable resources. Exhaustible resources have a finite stock and cannot regenerate themselves. Examples of these include coal, gold and fossil fuels. In order to use these resources for production, they first need to be harvested or extracted. In the case of exhaustible resources, it is assumed that the stock does not increase over time, therefore its growth rate Y is zero, however the harvest rate H will be positive. As a result, H will always be larger than Y and the stock size will decrease over time. Thus, the availability of these resources as production inputs would dwindle with use. Renewable resources are able to regenerate themselves over time. Examples of renewable resources include timber, 
fish, agricultural crops and livestock. Renewable resources have a positive growth rate. Thus, the harvest rate can be either greater than or less than the growth rate. When H is less than Y, the resource is able to grow and increase over time. However, a harvest rate that is larger than the growth rate would result in a declining stock over time. The second linkage is the environment as a waste sink. The environment acts as a waste sink in that it receives waste produced within the economy. This waste can be generated during the production process in the form of air pollution, effluent and landfill waste or during the consumption process, example, the disposal of packaging. However, the environment also receives waste from the environment itself, example, through lit leaf litter. Some of this waste can be recycled, such as plastics, paper and glass. This provides additional resources for the economy. However, waste that is not recycled is received by the environment. This is seen as W. The environment has some capacity to assimilate this waste, that is to render the waste harmless. The assimilative capacity A is however limited, and once the threshold is reached where waste exceeds the environment's assimilative capacity, environmental de degradation occurs. Thirdly, the amenity value of the environment is that utility value derived by individuals from the direct, non-consumptive use of the environment. For example, an individual may derive utility by enjoying a scenic view, hiking up a mountain or having a picnic in a natural environment. This derived value can be positive or negative, depending on the state of the environment. The examples mentioned above all provide positive immunity to consumers. Examples of negative immunity value include dissatisfaction or disutility resulting from a bad odor from a nearby landfill site or from a view of a polluted river. These three linkages thus constitute the circular economy where activities in the economy are seen to relate to those in the environment.